What's up, guys? And welcome to my first episode of my... I'm not sure what to call this yet, but I wanted to come on here and just talk a little, talk with you guys. I get a lot of questions asked, so I'm going to come on here and answer a lot of them, and hopefully they help you guys out and you learn a little bit more about me and I get to share a lot that I've learned with you. So I think my most questioned I just want to make sure my audio is recording properly. Hold on. <laughs> okay. My most requested question is what is it like being a South Asian Indian American trying to pursue music in today's day and age? Well, I can tell you that I it's been interesting. I um I was born and raised in the Bay Area. I have one older sister and she lives out in London. My parents both are in the Bay Area. My grandmother lives there. All of my extended family that I'm very close to all live there. And I still remember the first time that I told my parents that I wanted to be a musician. I was 13 years old and I had been writing songs all the time, um, recording covers all the time. And I told my parents, I still remember I sat them both down <laughs> at 13 <laughs> and was like... Hello, Mama and Papa. I have some news. I have figured out what I wanted to be for the rest of my life today. And I told them that, you know, I think I want to move to L.A. and make music for a living. Obviously, you know, I was 13, so there's a little bit of like, you know, stop. You don't have a brain yet. So I acknowledged that I didn't have a brain yet. I was not fully, you know, there. But that dream never really went away. And my parents, you know, back then, um, obviously, as any parents would do, were like, go upstairs, finish your homework, go back to school, just, you know, sleep and um, forget everything. <laughs> and, I, and I don't blame them. I mean, I was 13 years old. But, you know, after that, I... I just never really lost my dream and um, I every year like that next year I wrote my first first song that I finished and it's actually my first video I think that I posted on YouTube but um, yeah I wrote my first song I started recording a lot of YouTube covers I started posting a lot on Instagram on Facebook back then too and a lot of their friends funny enough would see those videos and they would send them to my parents and say, you know, oh, wow, Samika is actually singing and she's, you know, doing the thing. And somebody's walking by. This probably looks so ridiculous. Um, I probably should have picked, you know, a better spot that I would not be looked at. Anyway, so back to my story. So, yeah, I was 13. I, I just never really lost it, but I was very confused growing up. I... Um, and my parents could see that I was very confused. I went to so many different schools because I never really knew what I wanted to do. And, well, I did know what I wanted to do, but it just never felt like it could be a reality. So I eventually, you know, I just decided, forget this. I don't want to, I worked in corporate. I didn't like it. I worked for about a year and I would come, I would, I would go to my corporate job, 8 a.m., whatever, sign in do a little green mouse thing and I would finish and then go to the studio at like 6 p.m and 6 p.m till like 3 a.m I was in the studio 3 4 a.m working like really working and then I would have to wake up again at 8 so it just was not feasible I ended up getting a job waitressing um, and I was really lucky I was waitressing at this amazing Persian restaurant in downtown LA. If anybody's in LA, you should check it out. It's called Shikarchi. And the guy who owned it and the family that owned it were just so loving. And they were completely supportive of my career. <laughs> and um, they always let me take a day off if I needed to. They always found someone to cover my shift if I needed someone to cover it. And I just really started hustling. And um, it was really intense but it made me feel like I was putting in really hard work and my parents could definitely see that 
I was really working at it and it wasn't just something that I was just dreaming about and not really doing anything about, but it was something that I was really, really passionate about that I was actually putting in the work. So I think eventually they they definitely came around and now are the most supportive. Um, my mom was always supportive and my dad too, but they're really, really supportive now. I mean, my mom is the first one to watch anything that I put and the first one to like and comment and <laughs> ask questions that she already knows the answer to and send me my video just she's like for the algorithm and send it to me. So that way I'm, I'm really lucky. And I think being Indian also kind of helped with the music that I create I like to mix the two worlds together in the music that I'm making like for example I grew up listening to um, so my mom was a professional Kathak dancer which is an Indian classical dance and it's really graceful it's like the most beautiful dance ever and the music is so beautiful as well it's a lot of classical sounds but very calming and I think that calming sound and elements just without even realizing kind of came into my subconscious growing up I mean so she was she was in her 30s and I was four years old and um, my sister and I we basically grew up in the back of these dance studios and we were playing manjita which is this little instrument it's um it's like the I don't know how to describe it but it's kind of like these two It's like, you know, like the monkey, (laughs) the one you see the monkey that's like hitting the symbols like that. It's kind of like that, but it's really small and you hit the sides and you do like a da, 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 and it just resonates and it's so beautiful and it's just like this little bell. And at four years old, I was playing the manjita and keeping rhythm. So even though I didn't have anybody that was, you know, in the industry or already like a musical Um, singer, teacher, you know, one of those. I definitely grew up with Indian classical dance, Indian classical music through dance. And I also dance and grew up doing that dance. And I think that rhythm really helped me be really on top of keeping rhythm. So that was another way that being Indian is kind of influenced by music as well, the music that I make. And, um, Another way is definitely the melodies. Uh, don't look at my nails. They, I need to fix that. But um, anyway, the melody too and, and just the chords that I like and, and all of that is just, it's so Indian. But then also my sister and I, we grew up listening to radio. I mean, we would go to school and we would listen to normal radio, just American songs, you know, Avril Lavigne, Green Day, uh, Good Charlotte, Simple Plan, um Kelly Clarkson was so big at that time when we were growing up Taylor Swift she just had come out with her first album and we would play it non-stop Drake old school Drake Neo so many great epic musicians and all of them topped off with all the Indian music that my parents would listen to in the car and and just at home and all the Bollywood movies that really influenced, you know, who I am. And I think a lot of us, I mean, if you're Indian American, a lot of us kind of grew up that way. And it's cool to be able to create something out of it. And I'm really grateful for that. And, and yeah, my family now is, is really supportive. And I'm really, really blessed that way. And that's a little description about just being a South Asian Indian American artist, my experience with it. When I was first starting, I would go into these label meetings and I went to a lot of label meetings and people would kind of tell me like, you know, you should, you're not Indian enough. You're not making Bollywood music and you're not doing the Indian thing enough. You should wear like this and play into that. And, and I just felt that that you know, didn't feel authentic because it felt a little gimmicky and I, I didn't want to use my culture into as like a trick, you know, I I definitely embrace it when I want to, but I'm not going to force it and feel like I need to wear specific earrings or a bindi that I don't wear every day, you know, and it just felt like all these people were trying to tell me that I should be a certain way and and I, I, I didn't do that. And that's why I never really signed with them because they weren't really interested in something that wasn't and... On the Indian side, I wasn't Indian enough either because I was writing English music and 
they didn't know what to do with it. And I was writing English and Indian music. Like, it just didn't make sense. And so I kind of realized, you know what? Forget all this. I'm just going to take this into my own hands and make the music I want to do, put it out, and just see what happens. You know, I mean, there's no harm. I, I always, growing up, or not growing up, I always in the beginning was kind of overthinking what my first release would be. And actually, that's a solid piece of advice if you will take anything away. If you will take anything away from this, yes. My personal, professional advice to you um, is don't overthink your first release. I spent so long being like, what is the perfect song for my first release? And honestly, guys, don't overthink it. Just do what you want. I feel like just put out the music that you like and the audience will find you. You know, like there's always going to be an audience for it. And you just can't wait for that to come. You just have to start releasing and build up your catalog and see what also what excites you on the release. If you're putting out a song that you think people are going to like and then you have to go out and perform it because people do like it, but you genuinely hate it don't do that <laughs> you know like I have songs also I don't have songs but I have one song I'm not gonna say which one but if you know me you know that I don't like the song but I put out this one song and it did pretty well you know it, it got people say that it's their favorite song and I'm like really like I don't I don't like that song I only put it out because I feel like I felt like people would like it and I never perform that song I have never performed that song I will never perform that song but anyway going back to my original point is don't overthink your releases just put out music that you like because there will be an audience for it if you like it someone else will too it might not be the person that you think but there will be somebody that will and that's just what this is about it's just about creating relationships with people and you know just helping people and and music is so healing for other people that you don't realize that this little thing that maybe took you 15 minutes or maybe took you six hours to do or, or like months to make is helping someone and once you find that and once you find that passion just you know go for it and you never know what will happen I mean I never thought that people would find my music through cooking or little videos that I just make in the car and here we are I here you guys are here I am here is this you know car the mic it's a whole thing we're just sharing our experiences and yeah it's crazy you just really don't know what's gonna come out of life so and what you put out so yeah that is a little anecdote of just the, my most requested question that I get. So leave some questions in the comments, guys, and I'm going to start making some of these videos, and hopefully this helps you. And um, if not, that's fine, too. You know, you can just, some people are just, I guess, like the audio of people talking. That's a wrap for, oh, there's another person. I really need to go somewhere more private, but. It's fine. Whatever. All right, guys. Well, love you so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And talk to you guys later.